which just to confirm my, I, my calculation for the population deviation for this district is 7.06. 7.06, okay. So that, that, that's my main point with, um, with the map. Did any of the other commissioners have any points about the map in question? And this, again, this is uh, Commissioner Map number 10. I guess I had a couple of comments on it. Um, I guess my map has a much, probably lower compactness score than what some of the others did. I'm kind of assuming that many or most of the maps that were submitted would be legal after reading, um, they had something about the, the compactness and uh, I guess what it seemed to be is where there is like a, a plurality, you know, of a minority community that might change the result of an election or a community of interest, whether that's minority or not. Um, what I'm assuming with the neighborhood associations is that within politics, it may actually be that the way people vote is more split up based on homeowners versus renters, people that have earned income versus unearned, things like that. So it's possible, say, that you were in one of these neighborhoods and, and ideally they should be all, you know, concentrated together, you know, uh, but even if they are not, I'm kind of thinking that they would vote uh, similar with other homeowners as it, like, that that would be the main dividing point as opposed to which association. The thing that sticks out to me is this V6 district. Like, if those people look around, there's none of their, not nowhere like where they turn. Are they with their district? They're sort of. So I don't know. You know, I think tweaking it might cause, start to cause some other issues, but that just feels like. Well, what's your, what's your concern about V6 again? I'm sorry. It's just surrounded by blue and yellow, and not really next to. Oh, I got you. I got you. Uh, in terms of, of continuity, yeah, there is yeah. only one. It, it is kind of a, I believe that'd be District One. Uh, what happened there is that in order to preserve, like in the original materials, uh, one of the things that you could possibly do with this would be to try to keep as many people at the same as possible, like having as few voters change districts mm -hmm. as possible. So that was what I did try to do with my two maps, mm -hmm. although. If you wanted to make a larger change, some of the other maps are more where it's very, very compact and doesn't really have that feature. But I had to expand what was a more central district and expand it outward, I think. So that's how it got like that. Yeah, and Amanda, I actually completely forgot. I did, I did uh, notice that too, that uh, between the, the districts as they are now and the pro, uh, proposed districts here, there, there really isn't a lot of difference in terms of uh, most of the city of Bloomington, uh, I think, and I think that's good. I, I think if, if we're going to be changing people's, the more people's districts that get changed, the more possible confusion there is in terms of uh, where to vote, how to vote, etc. And we want to make it as, as easy as possible. Um, anybody else? Any other uh, concerns, comments about the current map? Uh, the map that we're looking at, sorry. Um, do we want to try, and I, I know the precincts are, are, are one thing, do we want to try to Finagle the new proposed districts to see if we can include as many neighborhoods as possible in the same district. Um, I know that that will lead to population changes, but I, wh how do we how do we feel about that? Or I guess another way to phrase the question is to my, my other commissioners: What um, aside from obviously the the population. Um, deviation being under 10 percent what are what are the important things that we want to make sure that we are either doing or not doing with our proposed map um, i would say maybe we could try especially now that we have more it help um to 
to combine the neighborhoods. But along with that, it seemed like the rules got more complicated when you change away from, you know, just moving the, the districts very easily, you know, through the pool that I had. So we would have to make sure that what we're doing follows all the laws there. So if there are variations on a map that you would like to see, so if you'd like to use this and, and look at variations based on different factors, uh, the guide team would certainly be, be happy to help uh, create maps if you give some direction on what you'd like to emphasize, uh, what, uh, uh, what layers you'd like to focus on, or, or what uh, communities of interest you'd like to uh, try to maintain as much as possible. Uh, so uh, if you give us some direction, I, th I think IT is willing to uh, help create maps. Uh, again, you, you should be able to do this yourself, and, and uh, we're not trying to uh, take anything away from you, but if you just need some tech help, I, I think IT and, and uh, other staff members here would be happy to, be happy to do that. Um, uh, again, just give us some direction on what you'd like to hone in on. Um, I have a question. Kind of a different topic. From the city, um, how, with the map that as it was and where it's growing, where are the areas of like significant growth? And do we should be concerned that like that's a trend and those are going to be getting bigger? You can see, I believe, this left uh, bar shows the current population of the districts. Mm -hmm. um, we should be able to provide you with the population of each of those districts back in 2012. Um, we may be able to do that here in a second. Or <laughs> um, I know there's a layer. Um, I don't know if it's broken down by the district. We have the 2010 census. It may be in our materials. Give me just a second and I can pull that up. listed each of the population totals for the district. So District 1 had a population of 13,677 uh, in 2010, or the last census. So that's probably the one with the most growth? Uh, 12,868 for District 2. 13,926. District 3, 13,500 for District 4, 13,672 for District 5, and 12,765 for District 6, which is the downtown. So it looks like 1 in 5. 1 in 6. Uh, well, 6 had a lot of uh, decline. Yeah, I was saying 1 in 5 had a lot had growth uh, with number one, um, it has, I think you were right, number one had the largest growth. And that's the, the red area? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Abby, can you take off the, um, the layer of the precincts? Really, I'm just focusing on city neighborhoods right now. So if you can unclick. Well, that makes it easier. <laughs> yeah, so 
I'm looking right where, right, yeah, right where that red jets out into the yellow there, where you can see the those couple neighborhoods that are divided up. So we've got the Prospect Hill and Near West Side, which are essentially they're both divided up into both districts under this proposed map. We have parts of each neighborhood in District 1 and parts of each neighborhood in District 6. So I wonder if it would be possible to kind of manipulate those proposed barriers so that each of those neighborhoods is in one of those districts. So are you talking about going beyond the precincts and changing what precinct it would be in? Because isn't that the shape of it, the current precincts? Yes, so um, maybe Abby can turn on the precinct layer again. Yeah, turn that down. Yeah, so essentially like the, the color change in yeah. the prices. So that's just so that's inherent probably in why. Okay. I think to get the whole of those neighborhoods you would have to move move. You have to move the precincts. Correct. Or you could just flip that whole one next to it that's yellow into a different color tra or change the red. Red. Into yellow. You're talking about B, B, six. Six, yeah. yeah. If, if I understand how it is. What is there? Can we? Uh, the, um, if we can find the population of that, as because I feel like we're going to take a, a lot of people out of District One and then put them in District Six, and then that's just going to totally screw up our mediation. Sixteen thirty-two. So we would be adding sixteen thirty-two. To the yellow district? Yeah. That, that, that would cause some problems. Because that would take us over 14.7 for District 6. Which would make it the most populated, and then that would, that would push up our deviation. district, the people who are making those don't think that preserving city neighborhoods is a priority, then like if, and those are the building blocks we're using, mm -hmm. it would be hard to, for us to make that sure. And just looking from the map, it looks like there's a lot of neighborhood yeah. crossing. Any other uh, comments about this map? Concerns, questions, any other things to bring up? Are the voting precincts for the next decade the same as the last? Or did they like redraw the precincts too? The county went through a process last year to redraw the precincts. Um, there were some changes made. Um, Like, but uh, I, I, just for a point of reference. Yes, uh, precincts did change. Okay. I think mine changed. I was like, what? Mm -hmm. Can I? Uh, so, uh, if there are specific neighborhoods or, or communities of interest that you all are focused on, uh, you can start by keeping those specific precincts together if, if you would like to, to look at other variations of, of maps. Um, but you know, going from a map that's completed like this to then try to tweak it, it does affect the population balance. Sure. So, Maybe better to try to start on from scratch. 
if you would like to keep a specific neighborhood or historic district or any, anything um, together, uh, you might want to look at doing that from the start and then building out from there. Um, uh, it might be hard to change some of these on the fly. Yeah. Uh, but again, if, if you would like variations on the, Sorry, say that again, Amanda. Would you guys be able to build a list of which districts or neighborhoods are the most important as far as like, I know Elm Heights is at the top because someone said that affected them, uh, but which ones uh, that you think that we need to focus the most on? I know Brian Park, I think, was one of them. Um, I can remember the correspondence we previously had. Or I'm sorry, it was Elm Heights. Amanda, you were correct, Elm Heights. Um, and then beyond that, if we are, go ahead. Sorry, uh, I was just wondering if you had any like background information about like how did these city neighborhoods end up getting designated, who did that? Um, is it something that we should focus on? I, well, that's a value judgment, but that's uh, <laughs> uh, I, I believe um, the neighborhoods themselves that were included in the map are those on file with the city and department. Um, and so these are these are neighborhoods that have neighborhood associations, or I'm not sure how they. Yeah, so these are neighborhood associations. So the city, these are like city recognized neighborhood associations, as part of like grant like they can apply for grants and stuff. Um, and these are the residents themselves define these boundaries. Oh, okay. um, yeah, I don't know that what they take into account when they define those, but um, yeah, it goes through hand. So it's not necessarily like every part of the city is in a neighborhood. It's like don't look at each shape and be like, oh, this must be a... That's right. Okay. It gets a little yeah. like dicey. Yeah, we have other web maps that are dedicated to um, that have more, an easier way to see the neighborhoods. They're colored all differently and stuff like that. Um, so we have other tools to see the neighborhoods, but yeah, these boundaries are the neighborhoods. Um, yeah. Any other comments about the current map? Okay, if there's nothing, no other, um, nothing to add from any of the commissioners, uh, we can open this up to uh, public comment. I'm gonna stop the screen share for just a second. So if any members of the public are here and would like to offer comments on this map or anything the commission uh, has been discussing, uh, please use the raise hand feature to indicate you'd like to comment. Uh, you can find that raise hand button under the reactions tab or the more tab in your control bar. And if you're not able to locate it, uh, please send a chat to the meeting post to let us know you'd like to comment and we can recognize you that way. And I do see one hand raised uh, from Regina Moore first. All right, can you hear me? Yes. Um, would it be possible while I'm talking to have the map shared one more time? Because I want to re refer to a couple of things on it. Thank you. Um, when I look at the city of Bloomington, I see a structure, meaning basically Third Street, that divides the city more than and that structure because of the the nature of the road really divides um divides the city and to include a neighborhood or a group that would span up and down north and south of third street is 
to me, not paying too much attention to cities or communities of interest or neighborhoods. Um, so I would say almost the same thing about the city north to south um, along a dividing line between College and Walnut, although that's not as um, significant in this map. I think you've pretty much got that part of it right. The projection to me is I see the yellow district, and I'm, not, I'm sorry, I don't know what number it is, and I see it spanning from High Street way over to the west side of the city. That particular district is maybe three or four distinct parts to it, distinct neighborhoods to it, that have nothing in common with each other. I would much see it divided differently. I think that's my comment at this point. Um, the, the east part of um, that district, Perry 7, Perry 15, Perry 16, is much more in common with the Bryant Park area, or even Perry 8 and Perry 32, than it does Perry 1 or anything north of 3rd Street. Having lived in that area, specifically Perry 15, um, and Elm Heights, think that that's a real problem with this map. Um, my second comment is, it, it um, I don't think that you as a commission should be thinking about voting or how people vote or anything uh, about where people vote. That's not your charge. Your charge is to combine these little building blocks, these little odd shaped Legos into something that's more compact and, and tested for the population size. Thank you. And next up is Chuck Livingston. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Good. Um, I did not analyze any of the maps in terms of school districts, neighborhoods, and so on. I was waiting to hear what priority you were giving to those issues and all. So I don't have anything to comment about the maps in particular. But I am curious, especially after hearing Regina, Regina Moore talk about map four. And uh, I'm curious why you went with map 10 instead of four. Perhaps you didn't consider the ones that came out from outside. But if you put up map four, Um, that map is, as Regina said, it's split by Third Street. It's also, much of it is split by Walnut, and it appears to be, for the most part, much more compact than map 10, the one we're considering. So I, I, I didn't check either of these myself for school districts or anything. So. I don't have an opinion about it, but I wonder if any of you did the analysis on, on this map. That's all. Do we have any other members of the public that would like to offer any comments? Um, I don't see any additional hands raised on Zoom at the moment. Uh, perhaps we can give it another minute uh, for anyone else to chime in and uh, if the commission wants to have continued discussion, um, they, they can certainly do so after public comment. Um, you can, oh. um, just looking at our agenda, if, if you'd like to have continued discussion, it's, it's really up to you if you'd like to uh, pick up on any of these threads, if you'd like to offer another round of public comment after some more discussion, it's, it's up to you. It looks like we've exhausted our, our Zoom comments at the moment. Could you put that um, back for back to look at? Thank you. I mean, I, def I definitely have some concerns about the compactness of Map 4, especially as it relates to, um, I believe, District 1, uh, whatever, or whatever the light blue. Because, I mean, we were just talking about not crossing 3rd Street, but that's exactly what that does in light blue. So I, I definitely do have a problem with that. Um, 
I I tend to think that like that area to the side of whatever where it was the the line that is at the town line is just going to be weird no matter what we do mm -hmm. there. It's just weird. So. And it's the only district on map four that actually crosses Third Street. Mm -hmm. so. It's easier for me to sort of let that go because it's always weird. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to say, like, I don't know why we were starting from map ten today either. But I think that they missed something. I was late. I apologize. Um, so that was just, I think, up for discussion. I, didn't get the feeling that, that was like our preferred map or anything like that. Mm -hmm. so. it, it was the only map. Uh, Amanda has submitted two. This is just the, the most the recent version, so uh, it's the only map a commissioner has prepared. Um, but that's not to say it's the only map uh, you, you can consider. And, and again, if you all uh, want to draw additional maps here, you're still free to do so. Um, how do the compactness numbers look for this map compared to some of the other ones? Now that we know how to find it. So closer to one is better or no? Closer to one is more compact. Yeah. So definitely this district is not very compact, but the other ones might be. there's a value necessarily as to what your score has to be for that although just the higher scores are, are they're better right um it comes up that that uh, district six is a 0.56 compactness score and to me i'm like how could you get more compact than what that looks like so i don't think we're going to get numbers very close to one you know you can't because they're not circular. I think it would have to be a perfect circle to get a one. I'll just add, Amanda's right. There's not an exact um, standard that you're trying to meet with compactness. The statute says they should be reasonably compact. Um, uh, just before the meeting, several folks asked for the compactness of, of the existing council districts. And Max, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, the low compactness score is 0 0.067. Mm -hmm. uh, for District 1, the high compactness score is 0.278 for District 3. So the highest compactness score for a current district is 0 0.278. And my you know, background in studying in school, like, um, about districts and things, I, I tend to prefer district, or uh, what do you call it? District, what are we calling this? District. Districts that look like a regular shape as opposed to like a crazy mm -hmm. shape. So to me, like this one approximates actual shapes more than um, some of the others. And I think that's appealing because that means you're not gerrymandering. Well, I, <laughs> I think it's easier to say you're trying to put things together in a way that makes sense just naturally. But our, our city is not a regular shape, so end of the day. Is that just, is this line between like the yellow and the orange, the blue, is that Third Street? Does that, that seem like it was an important decision? And I think that probably seems true. I, I will say Third Street is also uh, the boundary of two townships. Looks cleaner, but 
I think we definitely need to take some time and look at the numbers to make sure everything works. Okay. I believe the. Uh, Do we know the line? That's what I was going to say. I can never remember that word. I think it's just a hair over seven percent. I think it is. Yeah. So from half, it's acceptable. Mm -hmm. Whether it's acceptable as a decision for you all, it's under the maximum. You really can't go above. Right. That's not we sense. wouldn't be not doing our charge if we selected the map in the south. Actually, I was wondering out of all of the maps, are there any that are unacceptable? Or, like at this point, is it basically that we're just choosing between options that are all, you know, they're legal and they'd be all right? Let me double check map two. I believe that population deviation may have been too high. Give me just a second. Map two has a deviation, I think, over 14%, so that wouldn't pass muster. I don't believe any of the other maps exceeded 10%. Uh, and then after that, maybe we can go through one by one and make sure that Elm Heights, since that was an area that we were focusing on, is together or mostly together in the maps that we're considering. But I know that it takes time to move, you know, considering each one at a time. Do we just want to kind of go over them together in order? I think that we haven't done that so far. Yeah. So this blade is map two, which we determined, which Stephen said is 14%, so I'm going to move on to map three if that's okay with sure. the guys. This one for the back third street boundary. Click on the button. I just want to make sure. Like, I believe this is uh, number right three. Here. I think this is a line, right? That's uh, yes. so right. This is the Elm Heights boundary. Oh, it's a, I thought it was red. It's green here. This light blue line that's showing up, so I believe it's so it's three three districts. Do you want to move on to the next one? Is that the only um you have a high line that's showing up right here? Is that the only place where it crosses third? No, because it's in red too it crosses third. And what's that? Do you, do you know how the deviation was? I believe it was 7.8%. So it was yes. Yeah. So could see nine, sure, just to see what, um, I honestly can't remember what was revised between nine and ten. The reason that I redid this is because it divided Elm Heights, but okay. the positive about it would be that it's almost exactly the same as what we have now with the exception of, it's actually my district that is flipped during one. Um, and to me, I actually, 
felt okay about the fact that the neighborhoods that were included maybe now or even on my other map uh, had a different kind of character about them because I didn't feel like it would necessarily affect uh, my, to me at least it wouldn't have bothered me, but uh, I guess maybe there are others that feel better represented by moving you know, to an area where they feel that the neighborhoods are very similar character. disconnected in the southwest corner. Oh, sorry, this is about map four. I don't know if this is a disqualifier. Oh, is he talking about the, um, that section of blue down there? Probably. I believe the precinct for that particular area uh, extends this this is part of B or Van Buren 2 uh, so it is connected um, yeah that is Van Buren 2 it's just a weird district yeah. it's not contiguous to itself yeah. uh, or it may be through that road I don't know if it's visible it's not it's, it's not right here. Yeah, okay <coughs> as long as as we're within the population deviation which we definitely are they're both um, under eight percent that's I think that's that's the primary reason we're doing this did we check the elm heights on this one tiny sliver in the northwest corner. Zoom in on the 
neighborhoods. I'm just trying to see what the, how the neighborhoods are divided in this map. Prospect Hill is cut right down the middle, but again, that's the third street. Where is Prospect Hill? Uh, it's on the neighborhood. Uh, yeah, you can just sort down that click. It's a lot. Uh, where it's a neighborhood right there, which is a lot of weird houses. Street as an absolute barrier for the entire city. Or, uh, the entire city. Uh, maybe that's something we need to look into uh, a little bit more deeply for the next meeting. Is do we want just a flat out arbitrary dividing line of Third Street? I think it's kind of unfair to say that north of Third Street is one type of city and south of Third Street is another type of city. It's all one city in the south. Unless we're just trying to make the districts look as neat as possible, which maybe we're trying to do a happy meeting. <coughs> Any other comments on um, this would be map number four from our commissioners? Okay, so I think um, well, before we look into scheduling our next meeting, I think we can. Commissioners, feel free to jump in and, and add to this or, or whatever you'd like, but I think we need to take a look at the strengths between map number four and map number 10. Um, similar, right? Very similar as they are, but you know, they, they do, there are differences in the middle there. Um, they both have their strengths, so I think if, if there is anything we want to change, uh, we can look into these two maps a little bit more closely and have some recommendations for our next meeting. And then hopefully at that next meeting, we can make a decision about um, how we want our, our actual proposed map to look. So can I kind of expand on the next steps mm -hmm. uh, just so that we're helping you all prepare for upcoming meetings. Uh, a report from the commission is due by September 7th. Mm -hmm. uh, staff will need a, at least uh, a day or two lead time to 
finalize a written report for you all to consider and vote on uh, to make sure the map is as you want it to look. So, um, uh, can we do that vote by email, or do we need another meeting? You'll, you'll need to you'll need to do that in a public meeting. Okay. Um, and um, it, I'm imagining if, if at the next meeting you all can work through and have a recommendation that you would like us to put in final form for you, then the last meeting won't have to be very long. Uh, but at the next meeting, we're gonna need to make progress, I think, so we have enough time to put this together. Sure. So what, what would be helpful between now and, and whenever a, a next meeting is scheduled for you all to uh, kind of move toward a recommendation? Mm -hmm. Are there changes? Uh, you should have access to both uh, district R links to the map four and 10, so you can play around with changes on your own. Uh, if you have get any trouble with that or want help, please reach out uh, to it, it, city staff members. We're happy to walk you through that. If you'd like to have any additional maps uploaded to the city mapping tool so that you can examine them, like we did today with any of these layers, uh, please just send any map proposals that you come up with to us. Uh, I believe Max is, is more than uh, happy to uh, upload those so that you can dig in with the city mapping tool. Um, you all focused a lot of tonight's meeting on map 4 and 10, so if there are specific changes that you all want to see based on those, uh, please just reach out to let us know how we can help. But uh, given the short time frame before recommendation is due, uh, um, need to be moving in that direction fairly quickly. So you may want to set two, two meeting dates uh, uh, just to leave yourself some, uh, some time to vote on a final recommendation. So um, let's set up a meeting if we can for next week so we can move closer to a recommendation. want to do another 7.30. Um, we had to cancel our morning meeting, so we're just Correct. going to phrase that because we were supposed to try to have a variety of mm -hmm. meeting times, and I don't think we've done that yet. Does that, does that not work for you at all, like even by Zoom? No, it's a little hard to hear. Oh, sorry, I'm talking about your morning availability, like for a meeting time to try to have a variety of times when we meet. Um, I can do mornings up until about 9 a.m. Um, and I think I'm free, I think, each day in the morning. Let me go ahead and check my class. It'll take me just a second. Mackenzie, are there any evenings next week you are free? Hi. I'm sorry, I was asking Mackenzie if she had any evenings free next week. And Michael, what about you? It would depend on my class schedule. So, okay. yeah. Um, if it's during the like the middle of the day, I probably have to zoom in. Just because you know, campus here. I'm sure. So, are you generally free in the evenings? Uh, yeah, except for Monday and Tuesday for clubs. This is fine because it's all this week. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. 
be in person. Like 100%. Yeah, like five of us have to be in person. You guys just say Friday. I'm not available on Fridays. I mean, I could do an 8:15 meeting um, like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and one could do early. I just wonder if our next meeting is if it's 45 minutes enough because we have kind of a long way to go, I guess. So if, if we're not able to find a time where all five of you can meet, we may need to go to a time where at least four of you can get together. Um, it sounds like Amanda's got availability from eight till nine in the morning, and then in the evenings, is that right? Not on Friday. What I have is mornings, Monday through Thursday, and evenings, I have various times, but it, it's more cluttered in the evening. I guess I have Wednesday available in the evening, and then I have to schedule around my class Tuesdays and Thursdays. I work on Fridays at night, and then I would have to cancel well care or shorten well care on Mondays. What about Wednesday evening next week? Oh, so I it would have to be kind of later in the evening. I, not later than 7 30. Um, I think I can make 7 30 work, but I'm committed until 6 30. I have to drive like that. So 7 30 could work. It's just not different from what we do. <clears throat> it, it's up to you all. I don't know if 45 minutes is going to be enough in, in a morning meeting to get through the work you've got. So I would give yourself some time. Sure. To schedule a meeting where all of you can't can't attend, but uh, you may be struggling to find a time where all five of you can can come the week before Labor Day. So as of right now, we'll say Wednesday evening, August thirty first, seven thirty p.m. That if we do that, then she can't be there. But if we do Tuesday morning, is that yeah. people? Oh, you can't do Tuesday. Sorry, I missed that. That's okay. I didn't say it. <laughs> <laughs> Did we do Wednesday morning and then adjourn to Wednesday night if we needed to? Is that too much? I have a class once that starts at 945, so we have to be at Valentine for 945. Unless we can eat like at 8. You can or can't. Yeah, so, okay. That's okay. one time all five of us are available. This will be Wednesday morning, right? I need to present all the time because I gotta, I gotta be at 10, 9, 30 at the absolute latest. So you, you all could schedule a meeting for Wednesday morning, and if you don't finish your business, you can recess and, and uh, reconvene later that same night. If, if you, uh, or why don't we just do it all Wednesday night? She was just trying to accommodate me because uh, I can't be there. Oh, uh, okay. Because if Wednesday works for everybody, we're having another meeting after this next one, right? Yeah. So that was like a big, I know it's a really big meeting. Yeah. yeah. I, I think um, Wednesday evening, August 31st, Will work for for the majority of us, I think. So I think at this point we just need to, to do what we know will get us a quorum for these meetings. And, and we'll need at least three members present in person at that time. So uh, hopefully that works for, for folks attending. Uh, I, I'd suggest a motion to, to schedule the next meeting, uh, just so we've got a record of that. I, I move. Um, Wednesday, August 31st, 7.30 p.m. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, sorry, we've got a member on, on Zoom. We'll need to take a, a roll call vote so we don't have to go through and say yes. Or each of you yes okay. Or no. 
so Wednesday, next meeting, Wednesday, August 31st at 7.30 p.m., Michael? Yes. Uh, myself, Alex, yes. Mackenzie? Yes. Uh, Kathleen? I'll abstain. Amanda? Yes. We want to try to, while we're here, I know it's getting late, but we want to try to go to final meeting, um, which, I mean, really, we, we could, if we wanted to do it the week after that, we'd only do Tuesday the 6th, because everything, I'm assuming, is closed on Labor Day. Right. <clears throat> what time? Mondays and Tuesdays in the evenings are going to be hard. Is that the on the seventh or by the seventh that we have it? Um, it can be on the seventh. It's possible if I really need to uh, to attend a Tuesday uh, in the evening, I could not go to class that day and then review through Zoom if it's an absolute emergency. Well, I think there's two people who can't do it Tuesday. Yeah. Right. Oh, three. Yeah, that's not a good option. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I could do it Tuesday in the morning. That first class starts at, I think, 11.30. I can't do Tuesday morning. I might be able to try to skip by Zoom, but I'd be in the car. Mm -hmm. Monday at five, is that right? Monday's Labor Day. Labor Day. Oh. And then Wednesdays. First class starts at 9.45, same as Monday. And then Tuesday is 11.30. So maybe a Wednesday morning. If, we, if, what we're, if primarily the goal of that last meeting is to make the recommendation, then hopefully it won't take a long, long time. If at your next meeting on, on the 31st, you can land on a, a map and a proposal that you'd like us to prepare and have ready for a final vote, then uh, an adoption meeting Wednesday shouldn't take shouldn't take that long, but that that assumes that you'll you'll kind of land on a proposal like the August the very first meeting. So I would uh, again reach out to staff if you want to discuss any ideas ahead of August thirty first and be ready to, to dig in and, and move toward a, a recommendation. Uh, let staff staff know how we can help draw up maps for you or, or look at these uh, different questions you've got. But again, an adoption meeting, if, if you all are ready to, uh, to just vote on a formal recommendation that you sort of move toward at the last meeting, uh, shouldn't, take, shouldn't take that long. I had just another kind of general question that just through the kind of feedback that we were getting, it seemed like map four was the one that we're mostly tending towards. And then uh, then with drawing up the paperwork, since the last time it's kind of like a template, we could just draw, up, cut and paste, insert things about map four into there, and then if we really change our mind, we could replace the things in there with map ten. You know, but it seems like that could be things that are more than at home versus to cut, copy and paste. Mm -hmm. And we can, yeah, we can bring all that to this uh, discussion to our meeting next Wednesday evening. Mm -hmm. If, if you all are, are um, ready to vote by next Wednesday, and uh, uh, well, Mackenzie will be there uh, Wednesday, right? Right, I can do that Wednesday. So uh, it's up to you if you'd like to, to try to find a time where all five of you can, can be available to vote on the final recommendation. Are you free Wednesday morning at 7? Yes. Yeah. 
Yes. Michael? I have a class that starts at 945. Okay, so if we did like 815, or if it's going to be, if it's, if it's primary, it's going to be hopefully just an adoption of Amanda, does that work for you for 815? I know it would be cutting kind of close, but if it's just an adoption meeting, that hopefully wouldn't take too long. We're talking about the 7th of yes. September, correct? Yes. And 8.15 a.m., right? Correct. Uh, yes, that's okay. Okay, so we have we have the August 31st meeting already voted on, so I move for our final meeting, hopefully an adoption meeting, Wednesday, September 7th at 8.15 a.m. Do we have a second? Okay. Um, Roll call, Michael? Yes. Uh, Mackenzie? Yes. Kathleen? Yes. Amanda? Yes. And myself, Alex? Yes. Okay. Uh, is there any other business from our commissioners? Move to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Thank you all for thinking through that. Thank you, Amanda, and uh, again.